Hey everybody, it's me, Sina Eel. And today we're gonna to talk about the Oracles of Shadow and Light. And this is by Lucy Cavendish with the um, artwork by Jasmine Beckett Griffith, whom I adore and love. Um, both of them actually. Um, although I have a lot more decks now with <laughs> Jasmine's artwork and I'm not going to lie, I, I'm i probably addicted to it. <laughs> um, but this deck is actually kind of, it's, a, it's probably one of my newest decks and I am grateful for it. The, this particular deck um, is published by Simon Pulse, which is by Simon & Schuster, which is a, a rare. Um, usually most of their works are by uh, um, Blue Angel and things of the like. So this is one that's a little bit different um, in that regard, so not too bad. Now, these do not have color cards, but the deck information is inf interesting because it'll tell you the card number, the name, it gives you the message, it'll tell you the little bit about the card, the person, it'll tell you a little bit about what they have to say, and then the divination message. Um, so it's interesting because that's how each of the cards go. So it's really interesting how it works. There's also a guide to some spreads, and it talks about the beauty of shadows and versus light. Because one of the things that a lot of what this deck does is that it talks about the difference between the fact that you can't always have light without dark. How do you know what light is unless you have dark to offset it? Um, light is a beautiful place to be, but we all have dark within us. The moments where dark to be able to sleep, where we take shelter from the harsh light of the midday sun inside where it's darker we have starlight to be able to see what, how do you see the stars in the dark um how do we see the moon it shows it shows brightest when we're in the shadows of midnight winter when there's less light can be a time of rest so it doesn't mean that dark times are easy but it does show the fact that with these dark times, there is more to deal with. And sometimes, like if you see, and they make mention in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix about when you have all these things about doing things, or you have somebody who's always good, that it can be just as bad. Um, and there is, if anyone has ever read the Dragonlance series, there is a point of fact where they talk about the order of goodness that sometimes when you are so lawful, when you're so chaotic good, comes evil. Because you get so rigid in your in your laws, in your in your inherent belief that you are doing the right thing for all the right reasons that you don't see that sometimes they don't fit, nothing fits, and you don't have enough give, and therefore you create problems because of that chaotic good. Because there is chaos in this world. Because chaos and darkness helps us to grow. And that's where the neutral comes in, the balance. You can't have dark without light. You cannot have light without dark. And that's the one of the nice things about this deck. So you have things like the pink lotus flower, the fairy, I love her, shadow grave. Angel del Mortes, the angel death, fairy of the divine, or a uh, divine hand, 
Faceless Ghosts and the Haunted Girl. This story is really interesting because it's like, okay, <laughs> a, a clockwork pumpkin, which I love that picture because I'm like, I love steampunk, so I was like, uh, yes. Angel of Alchemy, yes. Two Little Witches, Strange But True. I am Kali. I love this picture. I would frame it. <laughs> I have a friend who um, has taught me a lot about Kali, the goddess. Because um, if you've ever watched just Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom about the thuggies and stuff, you have a very wrong impression of Kali. Um, not to say that she's not dangerous, because she is, but there are so many aspects of Kali that just that one is just not correct. It's just, that's just one of many sides to her. Autumn is my last chance. Snow Angel. I love that look. Nautilus Princess. Mendo Broken Heart Fairy. Fairy of the Green World. Mildew Fairy. Not my favorite fairy. Three Witchy Sisters. Fairy of the Highlands. I just want to know where her like uh, bagpipe is. The Violet Duchess. She is an interesting character, by the way. She really is. The Winged Seer. And there are more. Storm Angel, which is the one that's on the cover. Strange Valentine. Sea Storm. So as you see, there is a bunch that are light, dark, in between. Um, So what I want to do is do a reading for you that basically gives you an idea of what your reading is, that gives you a balance for you, that shows you what to look at between your light and your dark. Is your light good or bad? And it's not really good or bad, it's more of a balance. Is your dark actually dark? Is it really that evil? Or is your dark telling you things to look for? What do you have to let go of? What do you need to consider as a protective part of your dark? Is your dark telling you, hey, you got some stuff to work on. You got some stuff you gotta let go that you've been holding on too much. You've outgrown it. Um, that's what this deck does. And I love the fact that this deck has been really a good shadow work deck. Um, a lot of people don't realize it and it's important. So when I break out this deck for readings to you in conjunction with my um, my Beautiful Creatures 2 deck, um, tarot deck, which I love, which you guys have not seen yet, which is this deck, which Jasmine has also done the artwork on. Look, it's so beautiful. It is purple. <laughs> uh, which I will do uh, a thing for. Um, it really kind of jabs home a lot of stuff. So, yeah, using the two in conjunction have really done a lot of benefit for people. So, let's see what the light and dark have to say to you. What is... take a look at this. So the first thing is the Eclipse Mermaid. A powerful energy shift. So we're looking at a very big shift in your energy. We're looking at something that is going to make you 
rethink a lot of things. That's going to make you take a look at what you've been doing, what you and what you should be doing. That's going to say, hey, look, you need to take a look at yourself. Look deep in within. Are you doing what you really want to do? Are you looking and doing what you really need to be doing to benefit yourself? And if not, why not? Let's be honest, after the last 18 months, why aren't you doing what you really need and want to do? Why aren't you benefiting yourself better? Things could be better. Why not take those take that action to make it better? Lantern Fairy. A clear solution. So again, with the Eclipse Fairy, that shift in energy, there is a clear solution to help you get to that point to make that change. Seek out your solution. There is a path. You just have to open your eyes and see it. Sometimes we close our eyes to the solution that's really in front of us because we're afraid. This is telling us to stop being afraid of the dark. There is a light, but you have to be able to turn around to see it. Sometimes a collision of things, of what we believe, the energies, the attitudes, stop us from doing what we really need to do. Sometimes what we've always believed crashes against what we find out is really true. And it doesn't meld. Um, sometimes things that we've always thought was true because we were kids or because of whatever, and you find that you were today's year old. And when you find out the truth, and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you have to realign those energies. You have to realign your belief. And it's okay. The storm angel allows that to happen. Yes, it shakes you up. Yes, it's a little bit of a, of a scary moment. But you're human and you grow. What you knew at 1 is not what you knew at 10, which is not what you know at 18, which is not what you know now. That is what the growth is. That is what Storm Angel's about. Shaking you up out of your rut, making sure that when those beliefs clash, that you know that it's okay to grow. It's okay to let go of those things that you don't need anymore. It's okay to be today year old when you find out something new. Violet Angel is about the breaking dawn. It's about saying, oh my God, I see a way through. And when that dawn happens, being able to sit there and say, okay, okay, I've got a plan. It's not a perfect plan, but I've got a plan. And I can do this because it's dawn of a new day and I, I can start this. I can, I can make that change. I'm scared, I'm nervous, but you know what? Things are changing, so let's do this. And the Dried Flower Fairy is all about the sweet memories of the past, of the good things. Because making changes doesn't mean you leave behind the good stuff. It means you put them in the right places, remember the good things, to help boost you during these changes. It helps you go because you know that all those good memories are going to make it better for the new things that you're going to do. So making changes, shifting your energies, doesn't mean you let go of the good things in your past. It means that you get rid of the stuff that doesn't work so you can make room for new good things for your future. But just remember, with the carnivorous flower fairy that sometimes you may get a tempting offer that means that you pay a high price but make sure that high price is worth it that it's actually benefiting you for the changes you want to make not for the changes somebody else wants you to make it has to be for you and you alone and if you do that you will have the calm amid the chaos that's around everybody else. You will be the calm port in the storm. You will have that ability to see everybody else going chaotic and be like, yeah, I've already gotten rid of all that other 
of shit. I got rid of all that stuff that made me crazy. And look at all these other people acting out and being flustered about, oh my god, and I've already made my plans, so this is nothing. This is why you can do what you do, because you've gone the distance. So this is what the reading has said that changes our head. Right here. Power for energy shift. There are solutions to the problems that you may find. You just gotta be open to them. That you may be today years old when some of those energies strike against each other and you have to like get rid of the old shit. But you will find that making those changes will give you the chance to start something fresh and new, like a breaking dawn. You'll have good memories of the things you've done in the past. You don't have to give them up. In fact, they'll encourage you to do more and make better memories in the future. Just make sure that the changes you make are for you and they don't make you pay a high price. And if you are paying a high price for those new memories, that you're making a high price for the things that you're getting ready to do, it's by your choice and your choice alone. And that it's worth that. And remember, in the midst of the chaos that everybody else is going around, you will be the calm in the storm because you've already gotten and done all the, all the hard work prior when everybody else hasn't. So that's the end of the reading. And I, again, this is the lovely shadow and light deck Oracle of Shadows and Light by Lucy Cavendish and Jasmine Becky Griffith you can find it pretty much anywhere um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble etc etc um, your local terror shop I would give this easily um, 6.8 chakras it's really something i love using for um, shadow work it's really good at getting to the heart of your truth using this in connection with the heal thyself deck um, by ina Segal is really good um, so yeah if you're into something that's a little easy, but gives you a balanced look at things, light and dark, this is the one I would go for. So, until next time, Bendithian. <laughs>